Today we are going to get this completed look from primer all the way to mascara and setting spray. We are going to do it all. This is a glam look. This is a beginning to end look. Before we get into it, I always like to show what I have on for a shirt. Just a really quick blurb here so that you can see that because I do get asked that every time. I will make sure that all of the makeup that I use, even the brushes and the tools that I use in today's video, along with the shirt and the jewelry and everything is listed and linked down below. And I will also try to remember to put that in the first pinned comment, but a lot of times I do forget. So remind me if I forget to put that in the first pinned comment. Also pause this video and go down in the comment section and tell me how long it takes you to do your makeup start to finish and i want you to be completely realistic don't put skincare in there don't put your spf in there i want from the time that you start your makeup till your very end of your makeup how long does it take you because i'm going to tell you that from the time I start my makeup until the end and when I'm doing a glam look like this, it can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. This is not a look that is, you know, your 15 minute makeup look. I do have a couple of those, which I can do if you'd like to see a 10 to 15 minute makeup look. I'd be happy to do that for you too. And I just wanna say thank you so much for being here with me. And if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button right before we start, I would really appreciate that too. Let's get into all kinds of tips and tricks for the mature woman. Let's do this look together right now. Okay, so we'll go through some tips for prepping your face. If you've used a ton of skincare like I do, you might wanna take a tissue and go all over your face, especially in the places where maybe your makeup creases. I get it in the chin, around the nose, and under the eyes. So I wanna lift up any excess moisture off of there that might cause an extra layer and cause a little bit of creasing. Next, I'm gonna use a powder and I'm just gonna go over those areas again in order to keep a little bit of that breakthrough at bay i'm using very very small amount of powder and i'm going to go right there into those areas that get a little bit greasy so i have a little bit of combo in the t-zone there so i'm just doing a tiny bit of powder there that really does help soak up the excess before we get started next i love this primer from revlon it's the photo ready prime plus perfecting and smoothing this is an awesome awesome primer it rivals any high-end primer that i have and it's making all kinds of noises there to get out so make sure you go into the spots where you have lots of pores mine is down my nose across my cheeks right here i actually don't put any of this underneath my eyes i just feel like it gives an added layer that i don't really need so i'm sticking to those places and then along my chin where i get a lot of texture i like to put it there you can take a second and you can really press that in and that's going to help smooth out that makeup and make it look really really flawless next i'm going to go in with my jason wu eyeshadow primer and this is in light I take a very, very small amount of that going along the eye all the way from the lash line to the brow line. The eyeshadow palette that I'm using today is the new Sephora Precious Gems palette. And this one is in pearl. This is a very neutral palette. These are so affordable and I found that the quality is really good on them. So I'm gonna take a Refer 15 brush and I'm going to go into this taupe lighter color. I'm gonna kind of mix it a little bit with that cream color just because it's a little bit dark for me. Probably would be fine on somebody that was not quite so pale as I am. Now I feel like when you have hooded eyes, or you have um, even deep set eyes like I do, that you want to stay away from the crease, okay, when you're doing any sort of color. You want to use this real estate right up here on your eye in order to place that color where it can be seen. So we're going above, and I apologize if I keep looking this way, that's where my mirror is. So we're gonna go above that, and we're gonna just circle and a little bit back and forth on that eye. And I want you to pay attention to bringing that out in a kind of a straight line towards the tail of your brow, because if you bring it down, it's going to downturn your eye. And when we're older, we already have a little bit of a droop on our eye as our skin starts to droop on this on the sides of our eyes and on this side see how i'm really paying attention out there on that outer corner next brush is a bk beauty 205 contour brush it's an angled brush this brush has been invaluable to me as a matter of fact it's probably my favorite brush from bk beauty i have a lot of favorites they're great brushes but this one's probably my favorite i'm going to go into the dark and i'm going to lift that up the darkest shade in here i loaded it up and now i'm just going to go down into the corner of my eye 
and I'm going to put product down there. And then instead of coming over, I'm going to continue to go up and put product towards the tail of my eye again, where it's going to be seen on this part of the eye instead of down on the lid. So continuing to do that. Now you can bring it over just a little bit. And I'm actually, even though I'm in the crease, I'm still trying to go above the crease a little bit. And then I'll turn that brush around and then I will pull the eyeshadow towards the tail of the brow and continue to do that until it's blended well. And then I'll go back in with the original brush and I will blend the two together so they look more seamless. As we're down on the eyelid with that same brush, we're gonna wanna build that up in that corner quite a bit. And then we're gonna want to kind of feather it towards the height of the eyelid or the middle of the eyelid, excuse me. Make sure you go up on that part of your eye that is seen if you have hooded eyes because otherwise this color isn't gonna be seen at all. And we definitely want this color to be seen. We just don't want it to get overwhelming. The next brush is a refer paddle brush or a shader brush and it's number 21. And I'm gonna go into this dual chrome color that they have right here. It's kind of a brown and a silver and a blue kind of color. It's real pretty. I'm gonna lay that in the middle of the eyelid and I'm gonna blend those two colors together and grab that shader brush again and shade those two together. Now I'm gonna take the lightest color in here which has no shimmer in it at all, but it's a beautiful, very light white color or almost like an off-white color. And I'm gonna put that with my finger all across the lid. Now if I was doing a metallic, I would spray my finger, but since this is a matte, we are not doing that. We're just trying to brighten all over that lid. Don't be afraid to put your matte over top of that metallic or that shimmer that we just put on the middle of the eyelid. This is going to brighten it and you can go back in with that paddle brush and blend a little bit. I didn't have my camera on. So I just took my regular brush and we blended all of those colors together. We're gonna go back to that in just a minute and finish the eye look. But for now we're gonna do foundation. The number seven protect and perfect all-in-one advanced foundation and this is got an SPF and it has great ingredients in it I have my color in cool vanilla and it seems to work really well for me and I'm going to use a beauty blender to bounce that into my skin and I have been really trying hard not to use too much foundation at the very beginning of my looks because somehow it always seems to get carried away and since I've lost all the weight my face is kind of drooping and sagging so I'm trying really hard to use as little as possible and a brush deposits a little bit more than a beauty blender will because this will soak up some of that foundation so keep that in mind when you're choosing your application you can choose a damp beauty blender or a brush but remember that a brush is gonna put more foundation on your face and might not give you as a mature woman the exact coverage that you want. You can always go back in with a beauty blender after your brush, but I find that it's easier to put less on than actually try and take more off. This is a nice foundation with one coat, but I need a little bit extra, so I'm going to do two coats in the middle of my face right here where I have so much discoloration. So I got a lot less out and I'm just going to put it right here. In a minute after I'm done blending this in, I'm going to put a little bit more on this part right here where I have all kinds of acne scarring and dark spots from the scarring that I got when I was a kid. Next step is my color corrector and my standard is the Pixie by Petra color corrector and this one is in peach. They do have an apricot one if you have deeper skin than I do, but I find this invaluable in that I can cover my really dark circles without having to use too much concealer on here. And you can see almost immediately as I pat that in, look at the difference between the two. Isn't that amazing? I love this stuff. Remember underneath your eyes, you want to keep thin layers. So make sure you're patting that out. Now I'm using Tower 28. This has quickly become my favorite concealer of all time. Color is called K-Town. It seems to be absolutely beautiful for what I need. So I'm gonna put some right here in the corner and then some out here. And like I said, I'm gonna put a streak of it right down here. Then I'm going to spread this out, but I am not going to completely pat this in. What happens if you just let it sit after you spread it out a little bit is it's going to set up and then you can go back in and completely pat it in and you will have so much more coverage. Then I'm just gonna blend this part in right down here with my beauty blender. 
and this is this just covers so pretty moving on to brows i'm not going to take a lot of time because i do have a brow tutorial that i did that just is what i do every single time and brows for me are the one that that takes the longest amount of time and they really truly are the most challenging so what i want to tell you in this video is mark the spot where you want your brow to be the at the highest point and i'll show you in that video what i'm talking about and i'm just kind of making a dot right there and then i don't want to pull my eye down so if your brow naturally comes down you're still going to want to try and take it out a little bit in more of a straight line as as much as you can the more you pull those brows down the more saggy your eyes are going to look so try not to pull those brows down even on the inside of the eye right here where the brow is the thickest try not to pull it down as much and then the other tip that i can give you is when you're filling in under your brows don't fill in and bring it down always go as high as your brow will allow you to go so when i am doing that i am going under my brow and i'm still giving my brow as much height as i possibly can meeting that little point that i put there and that's going to automatically create an arch and then i'm going to come down and i'm going to try and take my brow out as straight as possible so that is my tips on that please go watch that other video and see the easiest way and i call it connect the dots for eyebrows it's super easy go watch that video and you'll see how easy your brows are to do so i'll be back with mine done by the way the brow product that i was using was the anastasia beverly hills brow wiz it has a micro fine tip and it has a spoolie on the other end and this one is in one of their ash brown colors i actually like the nyx micro brow a little bit more in ash brown but i'm using this one up i'm using the elf wow brow to set the eyebrows and give them a little bit of extra texture let's pat out this under eye situation here now as i pat that out all i'm getting up is the what would be excess or what would be actually going into the creases i love this trick it's one of my favorites for doing concealer on mature eyes because sometimes you have so, such dark circles that you can't cover it with a thinner formula, but you also don't want a thicker formula. So letting it sit down will really help because it dries it out a little bit and you're left with the pigment instead of all the moisture. What I'm going to do now is I've cleaned that little uh, ref or paddle brush that I had. That's the 21 again. I'm going to go back into that light color and I'm going to go clear to the corner of my eye and I'm going to lighten up all this area with that white. And then I'm going to take this this shimmer color right here which is just kind of a really really pale pink on that same paddle brush and I'm just going to go into the corner right here and just barely give it a really really light dusting because I have that white on and I'm not going all the way over with it I do want to blend it just a little bit you don't need to bring it down on in the corner you just need to put it right in the corner and then just kind of blend it around a little bit next i'm taking one of the funnest brushes from refer this is a tiny little pencil brush this is an 03 and i'm going to go into that dark color i'm really going to kind of load this up then i'm going to go down in the corner like i'm going to use a pencil instead of just shadow and i'm going to really put a lot of product a lot of that shadow in that corner i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to sweep it towards the tail of the brow again so now i'm going to just take and get the rest of the excess off of that little brush and now i'm just going to shadow it all the way under my eye i'm going to blend 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 so that eyeliner kind of creates the cat eye effect on your eye without having the stark black line all right eyes almost done except for mascara when we get there in a minute what i've been loving lately is this kiko milano sculpting touch contour stick this is a really good contour because it's very creamy and i also love that it's not too cool that it makes you look like you have mud on your face what it's going to do is it's going to contour and bronze at the same time and what i want to do is i want to take it up in my hairline because i have a super high hairline especially in these corners you're going to see that it's going to start out with a lot that looks like a lot and it is and then i'm just going to blend it i don't mind getting this into my hair I wash my hair like what every two days maybe every three days and i'm really going to take out this corner it drives me crazy my hairline is nuts as far as how high it is and I just blend this up into my hairline and love it actually. And then what it does is it also is going to 
not make me look so pale because after I go ahead and deposit as much as I want up in that hairline, then I'm gonna blend it forward and towards my eyebrows. And then you're going to have it look a little bit more natural because once you do that, then you're gonna look like you have a little bit more of a tan and not just this line of contour across your head. Continue to blend that in until you feel like it looks good for you. And then I'm gonna just squeeze this brush. Oh, by the way, this is a BK Beauty 111 brush. I should have said that in the beginning. So I'm gonna squeeze that brush and I'm going to go right here into the contour part, a little bit higher than everybody normally does. Lots of people put the contour when they go like that, I go a little bit higher. You never ever want your contour to be a stark line. You want it to be blended well, but you don't want to come down because that would make everything on this part of your cheek look muddy. I do pick up plenty and I go right here on my jowls and I try to go in a fairly straight line to disguise that jowl a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more and I'm gonna put it right here underneath the chin because of the double chin and all the sagginess that goes on there. And then I'm gonna to start to blend. And again, don't blend up, go ahead and blend down. I also like to come down in this Y right here onto my neck to disguise this double chin that I have right here and my neck wrinkles. If you find that you feel like you've got too much on, just take your beauty blender, go over top of it, and you're blending everything. And the jowls look a little bit diminished because of shadow. If you've been with me for any amount of time, you know that I always put my highlighter on under my blush. This is the Moira Dream Hi Dream Light Highlighter. This one is in Honeysuckle. Reminds me so much of the one that is by uh, Rare Beauty. Beautiful. And this one gives just a gorgeous light. I don't put highlighter really anywhere, but right here underneath my blush. I don't put it on the tip of my nose. Sometimes I'll do a little bit right here on the cupid's bow. You can do that with your finger. Put it right there on the cupid's bow. Just to highlight that area. And then after you do your lips, you'll see how pretty that is. And I'm using the Kiko Milano Velvet Touch Blush. And this is such a pretty rose color. I think it's 07. I think that's the color of it. Beautiful color. I'm going to use my It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Cream Blush brush. This is a duo brush. This is pretty expensive. You can catch their sales. But uh, yeah, I would never be without this. I actually own two of them. I put that in the palm of my hand and then put it on my brush so that I don't get too much at once. And the other thing is that this brush will also put the right amount down on your cheeks. It's just beautiful in the way that it blends out seamlessly without you having to do too much work. Then I will put my blush up through the temple a little bit just to blend the bronzer and the blush up here on my forehead as well. I'm gonna put a little bit across my nose, a little bit across my chin like we used to. Instead of doing contour on our nose and chin, we used to put our blush there. Have you seen this one size powder in the pink? I really have been enjoying this for brightening and then also for blurring out. I love the delivery system on it. You don't get too much out of there. I'm gonna use my triangle powder puff and I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up. Now, when I get that on that puff, I don't want there to be so much on there that it's going to make me look weird. So I'm gonna actually roll it into the puff a little bit more. So one spot doesn't get more than another spot. And this works really good for me. So I'm gonna just start down here on the chin. I crease right here a little bit, and then I'm gonna go up towards the eye right here. So that's gonna take care of this nasal labial fold. It's gonna take care of my pores that are right here on my cheeks. And then I'm going to take whatever's left over. So I've used most of the powder down here, and I'm gonna go over in underneath the eye and set that. But there's not that much there once I've already used it down here. So all I'm getting is just a tiny bit of powder underneath that eye and that eye can still look bright and lifted. Then if you want this shine down a little bit right here on the forehead, you can use whatever's left over to go in any places that you feel like you need a little bit extra. I actually do set this part of my face down here because I put extra cream products right there and I want the makeup to not wear off of that part of my face. And then I'll just pat all around my face. There's nothing left on there except for maybe residuals. So I am not using a ton of powder here. I'm using just a tiny bit to keep everything set in place. Even though we're aging and we love using cream products, 
powder is the way to really make those pores look blurred and your makeup to look flawless so it's really pretty to put it into these big pores that we get across our cheeks right here not wanting to go out here and take away from all this prettiness that we did with all of the cream products but just taking away the texture that we get as we age now i'm going to take the lys natural finish setting spray and make sure that i shake it up but I do really like this one. It does have not quite as fine of mist as the Charlotte Tilbury one that I love so much does, but, but I love all of the really pretty ingredients that are in there. So then I just take my sponge and press that in. Now for lips, I'm gonna use two Rimmel products. First of all is the Exaggerate Lip Liner. I love how this one is angled. I think this one is an East End Snob, beautiful rose color. It's going to just kind of brighten the lips up, make the lips look really pretty. I do have a tutorial named You Don't Love My Lipstick, You Love My Lip Technique, and that helps you to see everything that I do. So I'm going to go ahead and just lip line these lips going a little bit out of the line at the bottom and on the top, but everywhere else I'm staying into my lip line. I really want you to go look at that tutorial because it's so simple, but it can really make your lips look juicy and pouty. So we're going to do the liner. The lipstick is also from Rimmel and it's number 41, a beautiful bright rosy pink and that's going to go really good with this lip liner. Nothing says spring better than a pretty bright pink or a coral lipstick. I'm topping it with the Starstruck, I think it's called Starstruck Pink from Sephora. This is their Outrageous Lip Gloss. I love this. This has a little bit of a cooling plumping effect, but at the same time, the reflex in it and the color of it just bring your lips to life and they look so juicy with this product. And now we're going to do eyeliner and then mascara. One of the things that I love about doing eyeliner and mascara is this curler that I got from Refer a long time ago. It's not quite so rounded or so crescent shaped that it doesn't fit my eye. I will curl the ends of my lashes and then I'll go in and I'll cur curl closer to that lash line. I rediscovered this Physicians Formula eyeliner, felt tip eyeliner. This is a super fine one and it's waterproof. I love that. Now, a lot of people are, you know, shying away from black eyeliners and that is your personal preference. For me, I just really like going as close to my eyelash line as I possibly can. I don't want a thick line at all. This is just so that the base of my lashes look thicker. And that is how I achieve that. A lot of people will achieve that with a pencil liner and they'll go into their waterline up top and you may love that. So that is just whatever personal preference you have. I'm gonna go clear into the inner corner and come out. I wanna be as careful as I possibly can to lay that pencil on that line. And my hand shook and it went up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well. Now, when you come out to the corner, don't pull down again. Just try to go out straight towards the corner of your eye. So you are hitting that corner of your eye where the lash line is, but you're also making it a little bit thicker and you're coming up. Now, how I would fix that since I went up a little bit is I'm just going to take my finger into that shimmer color that was the duo chrome. Just gonna take a little bit on my finger and I'm just going to touch that part right there to try and disguise that I made a little bit of a mess right there. Can't help it when, you're, when your hand shakes, that's what happens, but you can disguise it a little bit. Lastly is the mascara. This is called Scandalized Retro Glam. It has all different kinds of bristles there where different lengths and different types and it just grabs everyone and I seem to be really enjoying it a lot. It is still on me by the end of the day. I love the natural bristle a little bit on this because it really does help with volume and yet I can get a lot of length out of this as well. I look down as I'm doing this. I coat the lashes completely and then I'll go on the top and begin to tip them a little bit. So I'm going on the top side of the lashes. I will continue to work with one eye only in order to get my mascara to where I want it to be. I don't go from eye to eye putting on different coats. Very rarely do I ever do that because I find that I will get clumpy really quickly if I come back to this and I don't do all the separating and the coating that I need to in the beginning. Once I have that on, then I'm gonna go underneath. I know that a lot of makeup artists and people tell you not to use 
mascara underneath your eyes. I've been doing it my whole life. I like the look of it. I probably will continue to do it my whole life. It's just personal preference. Makeup is fun. There shouldn't be that many rules to it. Okay, so here's the finished look. Isn't it amazing what a little bit of mascara can do to an eye look? Just completely brings it alive. Don't skimp on your mascara, gals. Also put on some jewelry, let my hair down, and we are ready to go. I hope that you did enjoy seeing this video today and what I do from very beginning to very end does take a while to get this kind of a look. Uh, some days it'll be a whole lot less makeup that I do, but this is the glam look or the completed look. I hope that you got a lot of tips and tricks out of this video and that it was very helpful to you. Thank you for being with me and sticking to the end of this video. Please don't forget to give the video a like on your way out of here. Hope that you're all happy and healthy and please come back and see me in my next video. Take care everyone. Love you. Bye.